Radio 59 WROW, first on the dial. And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. H.G. Wells was one of the most remarkable writers of this century. A storyteller whose tales are more than mere entertainment designed for a moment of escape. But rather, a teller of tales whose stories linger on in memory, seducing one to that sometimes dangerous and risky practice of thinking. Such a story you're about to hear. The story with a shattering moral. A story we guarantee you will not soon forget. The Country of the Blind by H.G. Wells. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing, too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston. America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Once I had made my way across the Cordillera, I had to find Senor Cartwright, if he was still alive. For it was he who had seen me last, that terrible night more than a year ago, when I slipped and fell from a ledge 18,000 feet up the face of Parascotopetl. It was a long and painful journey, but at last I arrived at the mine, high in the Andes above Quito, where Senor Cartwright was superintendent. I dragged my aching feet across the porch of his shack and tapped on the door. Come in. Senor Cartwright? Is it you? Yes. What do you want? You do not know me, senor? Well, no. No, I... I... You look like a man I once knew, but... Oh, no, he's... He is dead. Dead on the slopes of Parasco Topetul. Nunez. Guide. No, it couldn't no, be. No, yes. The guide. See, si, senor. That is what I was called. But you fell. I saw you fall. Yes. But it's unbelievable. Perhaps the gods of the mountains had some reason to spare me. No, yes. If we had had any idea, we would I have... know, I know. I do not blame you. You could not have reached me. And if you had, I should not have welcomed you. Not at first. But... But later... What do you mean, Senor, you have heard the legend of the country of the blind. Well, yes. Something about a fertile valley high in the mountains which was cut off centuries ago by a great landslide. The people who lived there had developed a strange illness which slowly made them blind, and after that their children were born blind. Yes. But what has that got it to do It is no with... legend, Senor. It is true. What? And you have heard the saying... In the country of the blind, a one-eyed man is king. Yes? That is not true, senor. I'm afraid I don't follow you, Nunez. Uh, suppose you begin at the beginning. Very well. You remember that night on the face of the mountain? I'll never forget it. Trapped on a ledge scarcely a yard wide, you, Williamson, and I. You had unfastened your safety rope and were trying to set up a shelter when you slipped. Yes, I slipped and I fell. Down, down through the icy black night. I fell perhaps a thousand feet before I felt the heavy, stinging impact of snow. I had fallen onto an almost perpendicular slope, and then I was sliding, tumbling over and over, and under me, around me, an immense avalanche of snow was rumbling, sliding with me. I fell with the snow for what seemed minutes, every second, expecting the terrible final impact. 
Slowly the avalanche subsided, flowing out upon a gentler slope. And finally, mercifully, I lost consciousness. When I awoke, it was morning. My clothes were torn. I was bruised and bleeding. I ached in every muscle. But I had not one single broken bone. I lay there and offered up a prayer of thanksgiving to the gods of the mud. Far below me lay a lush valley, sparkling in the morning sunlight. I could see the stately trees and the green meadows, fresh with dew. And then, I saw them. People, men and women working in the fields. Nearby, a collection of windowless huts marked the village. Then, I saw two of the men quite close to me. Two of the men who were quite close failed to notice me as I approached, until I shouted. And only then did they look up attentively in my direction. I waved wildly at them, but they took no notice. Why, the fools must be blind. Blind? Could it be that I had fallen into... into the country of the blind? In just a moment, we will return for the second act of... Suspense. Gifts that suit my yard lead. Almost Christmas, no time to lose. Lots and lots of gifts to choose. Is it too late? Hardly. Give him. Give her. A gift set by Yardley. For her, there's a beautiful array of all new Yardley gifts from a dollar fifty to thirteen fifty. For instance, there's the Yardley soap chest with two cakes each of delicate English lavender, romantic crushed carnation, and glamorous red roses. Its price three fifty. Or there's a red roses cologne and dusting powder set only four dollars. All prices plus tax. Yardley at all fine stores. Give him. Give her a gift set by Yardley. The country of the blind. I had fallen into the country of the blind. As that realization came over me, I remembered the words, in the country of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I walked toward the men, and I spoke to them. Hello. Uh, hello there. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. I come in peace. Who is this? A man or a spirit? Come down from the rocks. Oh, I'm a man, all right. Just like you. But you see, I've had a miraculous escape. And now I find myself here in your valley. Valley? What is valley? Come hither. Let me feel of you. Why, certainly. Here. Here, my arm. Hmm? My face. You see? I am indeed a man, just like yourself. Uh. My lips move with speech. You've... Oh, <laughs> careful there. Gently on the eyes. Eyes? What are eyes? This is strange. Feel this, Correa. Yes. He is but imperfectly formed. Some strange bulge there. Unseen. No, no, no. Your eyes are shrunken in, but mine are whole. I can... I can see. See? See? Pedro, he is a strange wild one. I wonder where he came from. Down out of the rock, no doubt? No, no, from over the mountains. Out of the country beyond there, where men can see. From Bogota, where there are a hundred thousand people. And, and the city stretches out of sight. Sight? 
What strange words he uses without meaning. And feel the coarseness of his hair like a yama's. Yeah. And you have come into the world. Into... No, no, no. Out of the world. Huh? The, the big world beyond the mountains. The world that stretches 12 days' journey to the sea. Our fathers have told us men may be made by forces of nature. It is the warmth of things and moisture and rottenness. We must lead him to the elders. But there's no need to lead me. I can see. See? Well, yes, of course. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I didn't see your water bucket. His mind is still imperfect. He stumbles and talks meaningless words. Lead him by the hand. But look, really, I... <laughs> well, all right. These people had been blind for centuries. They had forgotten even the words associated with seeing. They did not know what sight was. And they thought me an idiot, only half-formed. Especially when they led me into the pitch blackness of one of their windowless huts. And I stumbled over someone. Ow! A thousand pardons, Medina Sorote. He is a clumsy one. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I fell down. I just couldn't see in the darkness. Who is this? And what is he saying? He is but newly formed. He has come down from the rocks. He stumbles as he walks and mingles words that mean nothing with his speech. He is a wild man out of the rocks. No, no. I come from Bogota. Over the mountains. You see, you hear? Bogota. He uses wild words. His mind is hardly formed. He has only the beginnings of speech. Bogota? <laughs> Would, yes, yes. I come from the great world where men have eyes and see. That must be his name. Bogota. He stumbled twice as we came thither. Hmm. He must be taught. No, don't you understand? I can see, but not in the dark. To you, darkness or light, it is all the same. But to me, to us who can see, to us outside in the world beyond the mountains... Mountains? What are mountains? Oh, very well then, beyond the rocks. There is nothing beyond the rocks. That is the end of the world. But surely you must realize that... The sky above covers more than this valley. Sky? Above? There is nothing above but the roof of rock. It is very raw, my children. You shall have to be taught from the beginnings. Take him away. Feed him. It shall be done. But guide him. See that he does not stumble over my daughter again. I shall guide him myself, father, and feed him. Very well. Come, take my hand. Thank you. It will be a pleasure to get outside again. Out of this darkness. Come, this way. What is your name? Medina Sarote. Mine is Juan. Juan Nunez. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Sunlight. Oh, this is better. And now I may look at you. Senorita. You are beautiful. And I have not the words to tell you what a wonderful thing you are to see. And so it began. I, the village idiot, the slave boy, I, with my eyes still whole, I fell in love with Medina Zerati, the daughter of the elder of the village. And only to her could I open my heart. Only to her could I speak of the beauty I could see around me. Oh, it is such a beautiful valley. It's green with grass and yellow with sunlight and flowers, bright flowers, dotting the hills. And I, you said I was beautiful too. Oh, yes, Medina Zerati. You are most beautiful. It means something nice. Something very nice. Medina Sorote, why is it you have no husband? I have a disfigurement. These long hairs. You mean your eyelashes? But they are beautiful. 
They are considered a disfigurement. You are the most lovely girl in this valley. But they would know that here, would they? And so you have no husband? No. What do you think of me? Do you think of me as an idiot? Like all the rest? No. No, you have much to learn, but you will learn it. I am sure. And you are kind and gentle. And your voice is soft. You speak the words that are soft and warm. No one has ever spoken such words to me. I shall speak them often, Medina Cerati. I love you. And I love you. Then, would you marry me? I would be very happy to. not have it. But father... He is an idiot. He has delusions. He cannot do anything right. But he is getting better. He is better than he was. And he is strong and kind. Stronger and kinder than anyone in the world. And he loves me. And I love him. No. I will not have it. Great sire, if you please. See. What is it, good doctor? I have examined Bogota. And the case is clear to me. I think very probably he might be cured. Huh? And how might that be done? His brain is affected by something, and I believe I know what it is. Those queer things he calls eyes. Where we have but an agreeable depression, he has great lumps. Consequently, his brain is in a constant state of irritation. But what can be done to cure him? Oh, it is a very simple surgical operation. Remove the cause of the irritation. We will merely cut out those things he calls eyes. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of... Suspense. Welcome, recording star Mel Torme. It's terrible trying to sing with a bad cold... So I always take four-way cold tablets to relieve cold miseries fast. Good idea. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. This, then, was the price of my happiness. To marry Medina Sorotti, I must give up my eyes and never see her again, this lovely, lovely girl who always looked as though she were asleep. It was a price beyond my ability to pay. But they say it will make you well, my beloved. You don't understand, Medina Sorotti. My world is sight. You would not want me to lose my most precious possession. I... I do not know. There are so many beautiful things to see in the world. The flowers. The far sky with its drifting clouds. The sunset. The stars. And you... Just to see you, it is good to have sight. And I would never see you again. I wish sometimes you would not talk like that. Like what? I know it's pretty. It's your imagination. I love it, but now I... Now? You want me to? Medina Sorotti, if I were to consent to this... Well, if you would. If only you would. What else can I do? 
You will never regret it, my dearest one. My dearest with the tender voice. Oh, Medina. Be brave. And carry my voice in your heart. Now I must go. And tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow will be forever. Goodbye. Goodbye, Medina. I only meant to go up on the rocks and look out over the valley. To spend my last day of sight feasting my eyes on the wonderful, beautiful world of light and color. I drank it in. The green of the fields. The blue of the gently curving stream. The orange of the lichens in the rocky crevices. I climbed higher to see the great snow-capped peaks towering above and away to the distant sky, and higher as the shadows turned the snow to purple and crimson and deep blue. The valley was far below, and as beautiful as a painting, but like a painting, unreal. Medina Serrati was small and far away, a distant dream, and the world of sight was here, all around, overpowering. I turned and began to climb up that sheer rock wall, How many months it took me to make my way out over those mountains, over glaciers and snow fields and sheer precipices, I cannot guess. How I lived through the cold and the hunger of it, I cannot tell you. But I am here at last, back from the country of the blind. Good heavens, man. What a terrible experience. Yes, terrible and wonderful. But you, you aren't sorry you came back? Sorry? I see her face clearly now. It is the only thing I see. Nunez. Nunez. You yes. are... Yes, the gods of the mountains have had their revenge. Three months of crawling over the snow and ice with the sun glaring down. Yes, I am blind. Suspense. You've been listening to The Country of the Blind by H.G. Wells, adapted for radio by John Dunkel. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of Suspense. Are you all out of tune because you're irregular? Then help yourself get back in tune with Kellogg's All Brand. You'll feel right on pitch when Kellogg's All Brand goes gently to work, relieves constipation due to lack of bulk by supplying your system with bulk forming whole bran. Yes, a daily bowl full of Kellogg's All Brand with milk helps put you right back in tune. The natural way, the good tasting way, too. Fact is, Kellogg's All Bran is the one brand cereal that combines proved effectiveness with appetizing taste and crispness. It never gets mushy in milk. So remember, if constipation's a problem, gentle it away, as millions do, with Kellogg's All Bran, the good food way to keep regular as clockwork. A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Bran at your grocer's. <laughs> Heard in tonight's story were Bernard Grant as Nunez and Lynn Loring as Medina. Others in the cast included Arthur Cole, Ralph Camargo, Santos Ortega, and Jackson Beck. Listen again next week when we return with A Korean Christmas Carol by George Bamber. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. On CBS Radio. <laughs>